So, uh, since we seem to be the only people uh, in UTV off-road world that's not at King of the Hammers right now, <laughs> <laughs> we figured that uh, we might talk about it and kind of the differences on how you'd set a car up. King of the Hammers, um, basically a lot of rock, big rock crawling sections of King of the Hammers and also desert. So you really can't set your car up to do really well in the desert stuff and really well in the rock stuff. You kind of have to pick something you're going to sacrifice a bit. What we're going to concentrate on is if you're going to try and set your car up for rock crawling, or at least the rock crawling sections at King of the Hammers, there's a lot of things you would do different than your typical UTV that all of us typically uh, go out and drive around in the dunes or in the desert or in trails and things like that. Now, compared to your normal race car or normal car you're going to be playing with, Tires are going to be much bigger. <clears throat> you know, you're running 32s, 33s, you're running, some people run 30s on their play cars. You get into King Hammers or any rock crawling, you know what, I, maybe I shouldn't call it King of the Hammers because they've got desert races. Yeah. Maybe it's just, if you're going to go rock crawling yep. in general, then you're going to want as much ground clearance as possible and the taller the tire, the better. Now, I don't push 35s on anybody's car because it usually tears up parts. but for strictly rock crawling, especially if it's a short race or you're doing 20 or 30 miles of rock, the taller the tire, the better. Penzer, best tire made in my opinion. Um, but if you're gonna go rock crawling, you need tall tires. Next, you're gonna need a winch on that car. Some people throw one on the front and the back, but you're know, certainly gonna have to have one go on the front if you wanna get keep going forward on the course. Fast winch. Um, a lot of the uh, material style cables are popular now, not a steel cable. Um, they've got some really lightweight stuff that's really small in diameter, like quarter inch diameter um, cables could actually hold a whole car up, no problem, and pull them out of a different hole. So winches and bumpers. Bumpers are a big deal, and here's why, because when you get into normal desert racing, they require that the bumper is about four to five inches in front of the front tire, so that when you go to bump somebody, you guys don't touch tires. But in King of the Hammers or rock crawling, then you're not going to want a bumper sticking out in the front of the car. This would be UTV coming down into a rock. You want to have the tire touch rocks first. You don't want a bumper touching rocks first for obvious reasons. That would be an instant stop. Bumpers, pull them in tight. And these bumpers are usually going to be mounting the winch. You're also going to be mounting the winch higher up than most factory setups. Because if you've got the winch mounted low, it can be a clearance problem. If you mount it up higher, typically the hood is uh, back farther and you're going to have better clearance going over rocks with a winch right there. Bottom of the UTV, there's a few things you need to consider right here. First, the obvious skid plates or some sort of rock guard um, bottom to the car where if you high center it up on a rock that you can slide it off. You don't want any aluminum because it actually sticks and digs into the rock stuff. You want some plastic material, uh, thicker the better when you're talking about just boulders. Also, rock guards on control arms. So you don't want to have a lower A arm in the front of your car, long travel or not, that's got holes in it. For instance, a tubular arm and a big giant hole in the middle where there's no tubes. Because you'll come up over the top of a rock like this and that arm will sit right around that cap and lock you in. So skid plate underneath the arms is a really important thing to keep you from getting stuck. On the back of the car, you're going to want to have high clearance radius rods. You guys all probably know exactly what I'm talking about, but for those who do not know... Hey Justin, when is ours coming out? <laughs> <laughs> I figured that was coming. So rear radius rods on the back of a car. Standard set. This would be a high clearance set where they're going to go uphill and give you more clearance for rocks. High clearance radius rods are super important in rock crawling for obvious reasons. You want to drag it. Uh, you hit one of these with a rock and it bends a straight one. High clearance is a little bit better. So that's a must if you're going rocks only. Um, also, if you're going, getting it serious about building the car, then the angle of the bottom of the car is something you're gonna wanna build into it. If we're looking at the front of the car and uh, let's say the A-arm tire, roll cage, and uh, let's say a front bumper. So the bottom of these things are usually flat. I mean, they're not exactly flat, but they're close. And they usually come to a square spot on this corner. If you're building a KOH car from scratch, then you would build it with a lot of angle on that corner. This, this space that you've gotten rid of is a place for rocks to not hang up on the corner of the car. 
and high center the car. Also, when you come into something not flat and level, but you come into it with an angle, then that corner becomes much lower and it can drag on things as opposed to having that corner pulled up on a purpose-built car. Get into clutching. The reason we talk about clutching is because you're gonna be in low range quite a bit um, on this stuff if you're just crawling rocks. If you've got 35 inch tires and you're racing, you've got probably a flash, you've got big power and a big tire. Clutching is gonna be super important. Make sure you don't pop belts while you're on the middle of a rock. A lot uh, of yeah. people get locker diffs yep. for the rock crawling sections. Excellent point. So um, with a standard front differential, they, there's open, there's locked, there's you know posi unit, there's a whole uh, locker, there's a bunch of different mechanical ways you can make front diff work. But the typical diff you buy in a car is not gonna be completely locked up. So uh, the rock crawling guys are gonna go with a fully locked front diff, um, which actually is comes in the RC, in uh, the k RC. And the race guys are all, might even make their own. I mean, I've seen on big four-wheel drives, guys just weld all the spider gears and everything up and make it solid. It's a solid axle in the front. Shocks, if you are rock crawling only, um, then typically we're gonna go a little softer on the compression and spring rate so it accepts, the shocks accept a big boulder and doesn't, you don't have to drive over the boulder and push the car around, it'll drive up over the boulder and accept it in the suspension a little bit more. So more compliant, more plush. Also, we're gonna go a lot more rebound in a rock crawling car because when you come off of a rock and land it, we don't want it bouncing back up off the next rock. You want it to stick and not move again. Almost to where you have way too much rebound in it if you're gonna go into normal desert stuff. That's why we try not to tune cars for rocks because everywhere else it's going to really suck. Um, sway bars. You're gonna run a whole lot less bar on a rock crawling car and you possibly would run no sway bars. A lot of guys run no sway bar on the front a lot of guys run no sway bar on the rear. That's pretty dangerous if you do it on the rear because anything other than rock crawling, you're gonna flip the car over pretty quick. But a lot of guys will run a lot lighter rear bar than they normally run, even softer than the factory bar in the back. So less bar, more independence is what rocks are, is what rocks, is it is or what rock, are what rocks are what want. Ro are, 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 are what rocks want. Are what rocks want. That's hard to say. Say that five times fast. I don't know. Okay, shocks, bars, com, winch, and bolt. That's a kind of a three weird words together, but com being communications. Communications, obviously, between car to car and intercoms, yes. But even more than that, when you're rock crawling and you're racing, then your navigator's going to get out to go throw the winch cable on something, and you're going to want communication between your navigator and you. You're still in the car. They're not connected to anything. So you're gonna need a specific radio with, it's got its own battery. For their helmet, it can plug into like a handheld and your navigator can talk to you about where to go and how you're getting pulled up over the rocks. Winching, um, we talked about being fast, but communication so your navigator can help you through winching and getting you through the right spot. Here's a new trick that I heard from one of our racers and I, I, I'm gonna give it away because I've heard it from three or four other guys too. I don't think it's 100% secret. But what a lot of guys are carrying, the king of the hammers now, is a rotor hammer uh, drill on their cordless. So what they'll do is they'll run up the hill up on top of a rock and there's nowhere to tie off to, there's nowhere to wrap a, a winch cable around. They'll rotor hammer right into the rock, pull that out and drop a bolt right in it and then hook to that. Son and they're, they're, they're down the road, man. So they're a lot faster than the guys that have to go to a specific spot that has somewhere to tie to. So a bolt and a way to attach it is a really cool, quick way to do it. Last, pick a line. Oh, I can People, never do that. People, pick a line. So the pre-running at King of the Hammers is extensive. They have the courses open almost all the time. Everybody's out pre-running three, four, five times a day sometimes, and are running the same section over and over and over. But when you do that, you can come up to a rock section and you might have three or four different lines around the same five boulders and they'll run that over and over and over again to find out what the fastest line is. May not be the one that looks the best or looks the fastest. It might look the roughest, but it's the quickest to get up. So if you can pick a line or learn how, if you've done it a few, four, five, ten, hundred times, then you're gonna be better at picking lines before you actually get there. But pick a line makes you a lot faster. And we saw that in King of the Hammers qualifying. A lot of guys picked different lines up the rough sections and they were qualifying in the first position and ended up 10th. 
just because they went up the wrong line that they thought was fast and actually wasn't.